Are you wondering what the heck is a robots.txt file? Well, I'm gonna tell you about it. Okay, so a robots.txt file is something that actually lives on your website. It'll live at example.com forward slash robots.txt. So if you wanna see if you have a robots.txt file or not, you can go to your site, put in forward slash robots.txt and it should live there. Now the robots.txt file is a really important thing because it is recommended uh, by Google that you specifically have one. And if Google can't find it and other crawlers out there can't find it, in some cases they won't crawl your website at all. Or at least that's what they say. In many cases I've seen that they actually still will. But you definitely want to have a robots.txt file and there's some things that you need to know about it. So the robots.txt file, it basically, at its most primitive basic state, it allows you to either block the website, block portions of the website, or index the website. So that's basically what it does. It's just a way to basically allow your site to be inside of Google or not. But it, in other search engines as well. But it gets a little bit tricky in some ways in that what the robots.txt file does is it tells Google specifically, don't crawl the content on the page, okay? So that gets a little goofy, right? Because sometimes what'll happen is Google will crawl the URLs or there'll be a lot of links pointing at these pages and Google understands that they're really highly authoritative pages, right? And so they'll still index the site, meaning the site will still show up inside of Google, but there'll be a little thing um, inside of where the meta description result would be inside of Google that says meta description can't be found because of a block in robots.txt. So if you ever see that that says the meta description can't be found because of, of robots.txt, then you know that you have a robots.txt block and that's something that you need to fix. So the robots.txt file, it has um, regular expressions and regex that basically allows you to block portions of the site, um, you know, the entire site, it allows you to set up wildcards, it allows you to do a whole bunch of kind of like fancy things so that if you wanted, you could just block one URL or you could block um, one directory or you could um, block uh, specific URL parameters and it gets more advanced than that. Um, so the robots.txt file is just one way to block things online or to allow things online. You know, it doesn't only need to be Google. There's a lot of different types of crawlers out there, a lot of different types of things that are looking to access your website on a regular basis um, that you can be blocked from the robots.txt. So in some cases, you might see a hundred things in somebody's robots.txt file that they're trying to block. The reason that they want to do that is because if they get too many of these third party um, like widgets and things coming in trying to crawl the site, it can slow down the site, it can slow down the server, and it can cause, you know, server errors and all kinds of different issues. And, you know, maybe you just want to block somebody from scraping content from your website or, or analyzing specific changes that you make on your site. So, um, you know, the tricky part is though, in many cases that people, uh, the, these type of, of, of softwares, they, they'll just ignore the file, right? So you could, you can ignore it. And, uh, there's some softwares out there like Screaming Frog, for example, where you just click a button and it says, ignore the robots.txt file. So even if you have a block inside of the robots.txt, you can click ignore and it's just going to completely ignore it um, and going to allow you to crawl the site anyways. So a um, lot of subtleties to this little file that lives on your website and quite a bit to know about it, actually. So I feel like I could go on and on about the robots.txt file, but I just want to give you a basic overview so that you understand um, what it's about. You know, kind of last thing that I'll mention about it is you can use the robots.txt tester inside of uh, Google Search Console to see if you're blocking a certain page on your website with the robots.txt file. I recommend you know you, you keep an eye on it and, and check it from time to time. A lot of people will put a link to um, their XML sitemap in there with the theory that Google comes in, crawls it, sees the XML sitemap and jumps into that. That's a little bit of an older practice and probably not anything that you need to do anymore, especially with being able to submit sitemaps directly to 
uh, Google Search Console. But it's a great file. Make sure you have one. Make sure that it's set up correctly. And it's just one of a, a many different ways to block things online. Other ways being things like the no index, no follow, um, you know, using, you know, the URL parameters tool inside of Google Search Console, um, you know, mapping things with rel canonicals to other pages so that they don't get indexed and so on and so forth. So that's it for Robots.txt. Hope you learned something. I can't wait to see you for the next video. Have a great day.